Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of The County Seat. I'm your host, Chad Booth. Today, we are talking about building inspectors and the process of building inspection. Now, to some people, it's a friend or foe relationship when they go into their municipality or their county with a set of building plans and find out they got to change a bunch of stuff. But in reality, there's a lot of thought that goes into how you build your homes and what safety precautions are involved. That's where the building inspectors come in. That's the topic of our show. So let's find out a little bit about the process. The state of Utah relies on the International Building Code to keep its commercial and residential buildings safe. But the International Building Code, or IBC, is not free from criticism. Today, we're gonna to talk about the IBC, what it is, how it works, what are the problems with it, and what's working well. To help us do that, we interviewed a building inspector who's been in the industry for over 10 years. So in the state of Utah, we have two separate codes. We've got the International Building Code that applies to commercial construction. And then we also have the International Residential Code, which would apply to all one and two family dwellings, also covers townhomes and things like that. The building code serves an important purpose. It sets a standard for both commercial and residential buildings to meet in order to keep the property itself safe and to keep all the people who enter the building safe as well. But the building code is also the target of some criticism by builders who see some of the requirements as unnecessary or are taken off guard by the delays that official inspections can cause in construction. The building code is, is a, a live document, so it's constantly changing, adapting to current conditions. You've got new methods of construction, new materials that are being integrated into the code. A lot of times, most of the complaints are based on someone's uh, expectations not being met. So either they were under the expectation of being able to do something quicker than they actually can, they may have had expectations for costs that are not achievable, or other times it's just the, the, what they perceive as an inconvenience. From my experience, it's as long as you have proper communication and you're able to communicate, you know, these are the codes, these are why they've been adopted, this is the benefit that you're going to get out of these, meeting these standards, then usually we can get around most misunderstandings like that. In rural areas, there are some requirements of the building code that don't seem to apply as much as they do in urban areas. For example, if a ranch owner wanted to construct a barn on his land, he might be required by code to install fire sprinklers since the building is technically a commercial construction. While fire sprinklers would certainly help mitigate the effects of a fire in the barn, such things are uncommon and very cost prohibitive. A lot of counties will implement an agriculture exemption and that exempts uh, individuals. So if you were an individual ranch owner and you were going to build a barn, then a lot of times counties will adopt different provisions to allow for that without meeting the full extent of the code. Utah, however, is implementing a new policy that started July 1st of this year that prohibits counties and cities from making their own exceptions to the code. Exceptions can still be made, but only at the state level. So the building official for the city would have the, the most leeway as far as interpreting the code. They don't have any authority to waive the code. That's taken care of at a, at a state level, and the legislature is actually in, uh, acting upon that. But they do have the authority to interpret the code. And there is such thing as alternative means and methods, meaning that there are, there are alternative ways of meeting the intent of the code without maybe exactly meeting the letter of the law. So the inspectors on, on a local level are going to have less flexibility. The building official for the jurisdiction is going to have a little bit more. The building code is something that many people misunderstand. It is both heavily criticized and highly praised. We're going to cover some of the issues surrounding the building code when we come back and join our panel of experts. For the County Seat, I'm Cameron Porter. Thanks, Cameron. We will continue our conversation with our panel when we come back and kind of get in some of the details of why the code came about and some of the nuances of the codes you have to follow here on the County Seat. What would you do with an extra day in Utah Valley? Explore the Wasatch Mountains? Snap a family photo at Bridal Veil vale Falls. Cool off on Utah Lake or the Provo River. No 
No matter what you're searching for, you can find it in Utah Valley. Bring everyone together. 149 million years in the making, dinosaurs once roamed this land. Now they're found at the Dinosaur National Monument. Let's take you beyond the bones. We call it Dinosaur Land. You'll find it offers adventures and sights not seen anywhere else in the world. Come to Dinosaur Land, Vernal, Utah. You'll want to stay forever. The dinosaurs did. The weekends just never feel like they're long enough. By the time you get to a destination, you're worn out, and you may need a vacation to recover from your last vacation. The solution is closer than you think, and that's just what you need. You can find the desert at Little Sahara, the cool refreshment of Yuba Lake, escape to the green of the forest on the Nebo Loop. Make your escape to Juab County. It'll change your family forever. What do you picture when you hear Rich County, Utah? Bear Lake Adventure? Snowmobile action? Pristine skiing? Spectacular solitude? Well, if that isn't what first came to mind, then you just don't know Rich County. The Bear Lake Monster Polar Plunge. Snowmobiling Monte Cristo. Ice fishing Bear Lake. Skiing the backcountry. Fishing at the Cisco Disco. Come and find out what you never knew you were missing. Rich County, Utah. Welcome back to the county seat. Our topic today, building inspectors, friend or foe. Uh, and we'll have joining us for our conversation, Utah County Commissioner Greg Graves and Ted Black, who's the Chief Deputy Utah State Fire Marshal. That's a long title. That takes the entire lower third out. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. So th th my point of enlightenment about building inspectors is at a point where I was trying to work on a fence at my current house and I've got a really odd shaped, I mean everything on my lot's non-conforming. And, uh, and I was a little bit frustrated in a conversation, not to a point where any, there were any voices raised or anything. And, and the municipal building inspector said to me, look, you know, we're, we're not we're trying to block you from doing what you want. Our primary concern is safety. How do we get a fire truck in behind your house if we can't get access to it? How do we get from the fire hydrant out? And he said, those are the sorts of things we're working at. And it's like this entire curtain or veil of oppression lifted. And I went, oh, okay, these guys really are on your side. So I, I, I wanted to start the conversation with that story about building inspecting and, and code, and we can, we can go from there. What is the goal of building inspecting? Building inspection, the goal is safety. That, that, if, if you go back and look at the history of, of uh, building inspection, it sadly, the majority of the chapters in that book started with the death of someone or of s some multiple people. Uh, it started originally, uh, we started getting concerned about exiting. Uh, how are we gonna get people out of buildings? And we have learned things. For years you saw uh, metal fire escapes on the exterior of buildings. You'll notice you don't see those on any new buildings because they don't work very well. They look really good and they're great in the movies, but functionally they don't respond well to heat and if you get fire in one apartment that, and it, it breaches that escape, you've now blocked the escape for everybody above that that may need to use that. And so really in building inspection, our only goal is keeping people safe. I live in Holiday, and so uh, in, in that community, they, they passed ordinances uh, it, it, it tied to their building code. Uh, about the, the amount of building you can have on your property because there are people buying small lots and filling every square inch with a house. Um, is, does that play a role, the aesthetics? That's more of a zoning issue than a building issue. Uh, and cities get to determine, for instance, the city I live in has a minimum of a third acre lots, side yards, front and back, rear yard setbacks are set, mm -hmm. and it's, it's all to win to improve the quality of life in, in the community, but it has nothing to do with how the building itself is built. What kind of a, what kind of a f uh, financial impact do, do, does the county, I mean, m mostly you get into an area, and our conversation will be more in the next block, but 
you know, as soon as an area can incorporate, it becomes a city problem, not a county problem. So how active is the county in, in building inspections? Well, the county, uh, last year, we processed, uh, according to our community development, about 20 uh, applications. This year, it's already doubled. So we, because of our growth, we are experiencing a big increase. Uh, but it is a big enough concern to us that we want to make sure we're always addressing it. And again, uh, like Ted was sharing, our community development and our inspectors they go out to make sure that those safety standards or the minimum requirements for safety are being adhered to and that's that's really their role and from the county we you know we support the safety and making sure that you know as a consumer you want to make sure whether it's a home or a retail st space that that's being taken care of and and that those minimum safety standards after all the review is taken care of what happens when somebody you know gets a, a failure notice they don't pass inspection now, what's the process Generally speaking, you're, during the inspection process, you're given a list of things that you need to correct, and then there's a return inspection. Far and away, the majority of those are handled uh, very peaceably. <laughs> it's a good place for us to take a break. We're talking about building inspection, its impact on communities and the counties here on the county seat. We will come back with some urban versus rural questions in just a second on the county seat. We'll be right back. There is a place where looking out means looking in, where an impression lasting only a few seconds will be imprinted on a life forever, where courage is forged and innocence rediscovered, where remembering is rewarding and forgetting unforgettable. There is a place where truth is felt and where seeing is believing there is a place beautiful scene isn't it the great wide spaces of the wild wild west hi i'm chad booth host of at your leisure i'm asking you to support the blue ribbon coalition their efforts responsibly preserve access to our public lands if it were not for the blue ribbon coalition and their efforts you may not have access to millions of acres of land across the west this is America's playground, and if we don't do anything, we are going to lose it. Join, participate, and donate. Have you ever wanted to recreate the world around you? Add some excitement, culture, adventure? Well, there's no need to remake the world when that perfect combination already exists. Just remember four words. Welcome to Weber County. In Ogden, you'll find everything you're looking for, from the top of Powder Mountain to the restaurants of our revitalized downtown. Ogden, Utah. Mountain to metro and everything in between. Visit Ogden.com. ATV? Check. Four-wheel driving? Check. Bouldering? Check. Mountain biking? Check. Hiking? Check. River rafting? Check. Adventure is about more than just crossing activities off of a list, but hey, if you can find a place that gives you everything you're looking for, all the better. In Emory County, you'll find the San Rafael Swell, trails, lakes, and the small town hospitality you're looking for. San Rafael Country, in the heart of Utah. Visit us and check something off your list. Welcome back to the county seat. We are talking today about building codes, the uniform or the international building codes, as it's now known. Um, of course, there are some, there, there's this fringe of people who say anytime you go from uniform to international that we are being manipulated. What's the difference between the UBC and the, uh, of a few years ago and the International Building Code? The, the name, the, the major code bodies in the United States came together and tried to come up with a, a, so that research wasn't being done five times by five different groups so that contractors and developers of products didn't have to go to five different groups. You could come to one, kind of a one-stop shopping mm -hmm. place. The, I, I know the name International has confused some folks. It's really just a name. It's not a code developed in Europe and brought over here. It's developed here, it's vetted here, it's, it's reviewed here, uh, and it, it's actually a really good product. So here's where it gets dicey. I know that there's some rural counties, uh, and I've, I've talked to building inspectors, some commissioners that are, you know, n not in this urbanized area as Utah County, 
and they have expressed a lot of concern about the, the requirement that they fully adopt in every situation the International Building Code, because they say there are, there are things put into the building code that make sense in a city, and a guy whose nearest neighbor is 15 acres away and they're building a pole barn uh, says it shouldn't apply to them. What's your response to that? Well, I have family throughout Utah, many in the more rural parts of Utah. Mm -hmm. I believe they deserve the same level of safety that someone in Salt Lake City gets. Uh, barns, buildings are, are classified into occupancy types. Mm -hmm. You as a utility with the very lowest requirements, and that's where barns and sheds and those type of things are built and the requirements are appropriate for barns and sheds and that type of building. Uh, I know that there has been some concern and, and as, as the economy slumped a few years ago, there was serious concern in the rural communities and, and we appreciate that and we're sympathetic to that. But we have to be really careful that we don't let our sympathy reach a point that we start to endanger people and how things are built. If you're building an assembly occupancy, a place where large groups of people meet, you need to build it with the appropriate construction and exiting and fire protection to allow them to exit that building safely. And so again, it's really all about safety and I really believe uh, that the folks in Sevier County deserve the same level of safety that the folks in Salt Lake County have. I think their argument would come back to the fact that, that what may be unsafe in Orem is doesn't create a safety, you know, like with offsets and things like that. And it's like, so what if my shed burns down? You know, it's not going to affect anybody but my, you know, my ranchette, and I, I, I might lose, you know, my garden tractor. So again, the the requirements for the shed are very minimal. They're not fire sprinkling the shed. They're not putting alarm systems in the shed. They're not building them indestructible. Uh, you can, you, in fact, you can build a, a small shed without any requirements at all as long as you meet the zoning requirements of your community. Uh, we have to stay focused on keeping people safe. And so if you're building a building, let's say you're building a, a, a convention center in, in uh, one of the, say Mo, let's say Moab, mm -hmm. and you're going to put a thousand people in that convention center over a period of time through the, or each time through the course of your season. It takes the same effort to evacuate that thousand people from the building in Moab as it does for someone in Provo. And so the standard has to be the same. And these standards, not only are they vetted through the International Code Commission who develops the international codes, when they come to Utah, we spend a year going through all of the codes that are adopted and anything that is not appropriate for the state of Utah we remove and so it's reviewed by multiple committees it's approved by boards and then it goes to the state legislature and is approved and we have removed things that we didn't feel were appropriate for the state of Utah uh, to make that the best possible code we can get from Utah we just don't take carte blanche what they produce. We go through every page of those documents. And I think that's important because from the county, our county standpoint, in dealing with our people, we feel comfortable in the process because again, the name does tend to make some people leery and understandably so. But with the subcommittees that review it, sending it to the committees and, and the fact that uh, even though there is an international code, our state does remove quite a bit. In fact, if you read the 213 pages on the PDF, there's a lot of stuff that has been uh, removed or stricken from that document or modified to accommodate and fit after being vetted with home builders associations and all sorts of entities, county governments, city governments. And so there is an opportunity for everybody to weigh in and, and be involved in the process to make the code conform to what we need for the state. And again, going back to, to set a set of minimum safety standards that are tried and true. You have to deal with the public relations end of this because I'm sure anytime something doesn't go well, sometimes even in the city, the county commissioners, where they go to to, to complain about sure. it. Um, how much pushback do you get about building code issues? 
Uh, very, very few. Uh, in our county, uh, in the previous year and a half, I've had two that have come to my attention, uh, is all. And th the reason being on those were maybe sometimes the engineer was unaware of maybe some zoning issues, not necessarily the building code. And so sometimes they confuse the issues, uh, whereas you know the structural integrity of a building and things like that are generally not the sticky point that's you know that's a very good point because you'll have an inspector come in and look at your you know you go and you get a set of plans approved and there's actually two things happening there's a there's a building code and there's a zoning code um, are, are people confusing some uh, uh, frequently what it is that they're complaining about yes uh, <laughs> Elaborate on that. One one word answers are not acceptable on the <laughs> county seat. <laughs> uh, we had an issue uh, a year or so ago with what we thought was a building code issue. What it really was was a wildland urban interface code issue, which isn't even adopted by these bodies. It's adopted by the state lands and forestry for structures in the wildland urban interface. We worked with state lands and forestry to find a solution because the counties frankly had a legitimate concern about what was going on. And then we went to the individual counties and met with the county commissions throughout the state and explained what had happened uh, they had and we had cleared them having authority to manipulate that code to better fit their needs uh, and we were able to resolve I think that one problem. Uh, so we need to know specifically what the problem is and you can bring it to my office uh, if it's a fire issue and the building folks do the same thing. We need specifics and with specifics we can do the research and find a solution to the problems that you're having and that's what we like to do. Uh, we by no, my, no means want this to be a burden to anybody. Our only goal is to ensure the safety of the citizens of Utah. I think it's important for all the residents to realize that all the county commissioners statewide through an organization that we call it UAC that uh, we all do coordinate and talk together so we work on each other's issues together and so they should let us know. Okay well that's great. I, uh, I think I'm actually going to pause this over for the next break but you did set me up for one more question that I really think people will want to know. We're going to take a quick break here on the county seat. We'll be right back. In just Kanab, base camp for your Southern Utah adventures. You belong in Kanab. There's a little place map where I was raised where my heart's at where the sagebrush grows wild and high and the stars come out at night oh there ain't nothing like being raised in the basin with the youth reservation skin starvation that Duchesne County life that is beyond words. There is nothing to be said, except take your time in Bryce Canyon country. Unlimited opportunity for adventure. It's all about knowing where to look. ATV adventures, rock crawling events, art festivals, and wildlife events. The opportunities are limitless. Pick your adventure in Millard County. Welcome back to the county seat. We are talking today about building codes. You know, at the end of the last segment, you raised a very good question. 
uh, because you were talking about the wildland interface. How many different codes does a guy have to comply with to get his house built? Well, there's, there's, you need to understand that there's different codes. So uh, to build your home, you'd have to meet the zoning requirements of your community. Mm -hmm. Once that's done, the plan review's done, you meet the International Residential Code. And that is an all-encompassing code for the construction of a single family dwelling. And there's a couple other residential dwellings that fall into that category, excuse me. The fire code and those issues, your access and how much water you have to fight a fire and hydrants should have been done during the development phase of the subdivision. So the individual contractor shouldn't have to develop or shouldn't have to deal with that at that phase uh, unless he's building something really outrageous. And so you can build your home using the residential code. When you build a commercial structure, you have to use the international building code, plumbing code, the National Electrical Code, the Mechanical Code, zoning comes into play, uh, there are structural issues it's that have to do with the, the, yeah, it's, <laughs> then it gets, but we generally don't have problems with those because they're, the, tr a significant amount of engineering goes into a large commercial building. And if they don't do that engineering, they run into some problems. Sure. Uh, in fact, in Utah County uh, last year, we had a structure that they brought in, and and it was in the commercial use. But uh, for example, they give it to us. We inspect it for zoning, building, exactly like Ted is saying here. And when we get done reviewing the plans and sending it through everybody for review, our our fire marshal, our you know everybody within the county, uh, what we do is we then give it back to the developer or the owner and with a list and in this case we had a one page of you know 20 issues that they needed to address that meant that uh, met the minimum standard of safety for all those who would be using, utilizing the building permanently or attending whatever the case may be okay so what's the, with all that because uh, i counted almost 10 when you made the list of codes What's the best way for somebody to, like a homeowner is going to do his own remodel, gets get a permit? What should he do? Hire a qualified designer that understands the codes. If he gets a quality designer and a quality contractor, he won't have any problems. How much help can the building department be if he can't afford a designer? Uh, you really have to have your home designed. Uh, there's, this, there's structural issues with your home, your footing, your foundation, your bearing walls that really should be done by a professional. Uh, and so the building department can give you some help, but really it's not their role to design your home. So get an engineering stamp on something before you build. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, that's the answer. We appreciate your inviting us in the home. I hope this has been interesting to you. It certainly has to me. And um, remember, local government is where your life happens or disaster doesn't, as is the case with our conversation today. Thank you to our guests for joining us. And check us out on social media. Share this with your friends. We'll look for you next week on The County Seat. If you'd like to share this video with your friends, well, you do that right here. If you would like to subscribe to our YouTube channel, you do that over here. If you'd like to interact with us on the county seat, that happens over here. If you want to watch the next episode of the county seat, you can catch it Saturday night at 11 or Sunday morning at 8.30 on ABC4 Good For Utah.